Hi, my name is Jess Davis. I am a teaching liaison librarian at the University of Newcastle. And today's focus on the library session will be looking at how reliable is the information source. I'd like to start by acknowledging the country. So I'm coming to you today from Awabakal country. I pay respects to, to the elders past, present and emerging. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. So what we'll cover today will be how to work out how reliable an information source is using the SIFT method. So when you do a search, whether that be in library search or on Google or another search engine, it brings up a lot of different results and not all are good. So getting in the habit of evaluating resources that you find will really enable you to work out the reliability of the specific information source. So for example, I have a search on my slide, which is social media and true crime. I have a couple of examples of different results that I was able to find. So I've got some which may be of better quality. So something from Taylor and Francis, which is a journals database, um, which is an actual academic article. But I also have a lot of content from less accurate websites, such as from coldcaseinc.com, watchmojo.com, and also from Vanity Fair. This is just from the same Google search. So you can really see the importance of evaluating your sources because very few of these sources would be appropriate for your academic assignment. However, one way that you can work out if the information source is reliable is by using an evaluation tool. It can help you to sort through the good and the bad sources and know which are the best options for you to use for your assignment. One evaluation tool that you can use is called the SIFT method. SIFT is an acronym that stands for stop, investigate the source, find other coverage and trace the claims. So stop is what you would do at the very beginning. And it's when you stop and actually look at the resource and ask yourself a few questions, such as, do I know this website? Do I know this information source? Do I know its reputation? Can I immediately tell if it is from an academic source or if it's from a different type of source that may not be the best option for my research? Then you move on to investigate the source, where you ask the question about the expertise and agenda of the source. So you would look at the author's credentials, and sometimes that is more obvious than others. Maybe they have their credentials listed on the article, or maybe you might have to do a quick Google search to find out who the author is and where they get their expertise from, if they have done a course or if they're an academic um, or an expert in the field. It's also important for you to know the agenda. So can you detect any biases when you are reading the resource? Then you would look to see if you can find other coverage. So if you can find other articles about the same topic, are those articles saying the same thing or are they saying something different? Are they claiming a different result? than what the original article that you have found is claiming. And finally, one of the easiest ways to evaluate a source is to trace the claims. So if there's links within the actual article that you can click on, do they take you to reputable sources or they, do they take you to not very good sources? Are the links active? Uh, or do they just take you to a dead end? And also check the references and see if you can find out if the references can be verified or not. So to give you a bit of an example of what this looks like, I'm just going to do the same search as what I have on my slide. So I looked up social media and true crime. So you can see that I've got some of the same results as what I had on my slide. One that I'll have a look at will be the top one, which is from Cold Case Inc. So when I've got gotten to the site, I'm stopping and I'm thinking, do I know this website? Have I accessed this website before? I haven't. So I need to see where they are publishing from. So I can go down to About Us, find out information about the actual source, read about why this website has been published, 
And I can already see from a very brief look at it that it is not the best quality source. However, I can continue on with my next question, which is investigating the expertise and agenda. So I can tell that the agenda from this page, it appears to be for entertainment purposes, so not from an academic perspective. Although in the About Us section of the website, it did list who the author may be, on this actual article, there is no uh, author listed. So I don't actually know if he has written this or if it's been written by somebody else. It's a lot harder for me to work out uh, the expertise of the author because they are not specifically listed. I could also find other content. So I can go back and I can look at the other examples that I found. Uh, that would be part of find other coverage. And then I can go back and I can check to see if I can trace any of the claims made within the article. There doesn't look to be any reference list or any links that are linking me elsewhere. Um, I would need to go through and find different keywords that I could search to trace the actual claims. So taking that time to go through the SIF method and evaluate your source before you go ahead uh, and use it is really valuable. Are there any questions in the room at all? Thanks, Jess. I do have a question. What if your source has been located because you've done a search through Google Scholar? Does that give you more uh, authoritative sources? No, so not necessarily. Although Google Scholar is can be a great option because it is Google's academic database. So it does include academic journal articles. It does include a lot of information from the open web in general. So although you might be able to find more authoritative sources, you should still go through the process of evaluating them using a tool like SIFT. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, thanks for joining us today. The recording will be available soon.